because he want the church home he want the church home and if you continue to worship the way you are worshiping to pray the way you are praying to behave the way you are behaving to act the way you are acting you may be left behind but refuse lift up your hands during the day of the pentecost when the holy ghost was released there were tongues of fire that landed to everyone who was in the upper room can you tell the lord this morning to light you like a candle to release his light to release those tongues of fire to release the tongues of fire to release the tongues of fire that you will catch the fire of the lord the fire of the holy ghost the fire of the holy ghost can you open up and begin to pray in the spirit take few minutes and pray in the spirit take few minutes and pray in the spirit pray in the spirit worship the father in the spirit worship the father in the spirit refuse to be religious refuse to listen to your to your to your to your neighbor can you pray don't look at, at your neighbor don't just look around can you pray kabozi kato lipa hatarikata lepo kizeta riabaha repekete zoka shalabo zitiribaha tell the lord tell the lord will you not revive me lord that i may rejoice in you will you not revive us oh lord will you not revive me lord will you not revive us oh lord that we may rejoice in you mako zilabikaha repekato zota rapa katalabashanda repeke zeta break the spirit of religion refuse to be bowed by the spirit of religion lika zika to zika baha lepaka to zanda rapaka ta zata la baha rapaka to zita li bahanda rapaka taya can you show god that truly you want him that truly you want that change that truly you need his presence in your life that truly you cannot go without him mazoke papa ripata la bazota rapaka ta la baha I destroy the spirit of religion I paralyze the forces of religiosity they have no power they have no room mazinda la baha destroy which craft destroy which craft destroy which craft there is no sorcery against jacob destroy destroy the spirit of which craft makata zita la baha on god la pazokata la pakata rabaha we destroy which craft we destroy poverty we lose our lives we lose our minds we lose our families we lose this city we lose moranga from the spirit of witchcraft we lose moranga from poverty we lose moranga from religiosity marapazanta we lose this nation we lose our land la karabashanda my god my god let them be revived release release that in grace release that in grace release that in grace release that grace holy spirit of god holy spirit of god carry each one of us carry every one of us carry every one of us carry every one of us lift every one of us makata zata la bashanta makato zata marapakata la baha cultivate his presence it is his presence that will make the difference mare la bori bahana la boshata haya oh shala barabo kata we bless you jesus we exalt you father we thank you sweet spirit of god launch us this day launch us into the deep presence of the lord we ask that lord your presence will go with us it is your presence that will make all the difference we thank you for the ministry of the word we thank you for your servant we thank you lord 
for every one of us who has come here. How we desire to encounter with you. To know you, Lord. To know you, Lord. To love you more. To know you more. To walk with you. To do your will. All I ask, let your kingdom come. In our midst, oh Lord. Let your will be done. In our lives, in this city, and in our nation. As it is in heaven. In Jesus' name we pray. And every one of us say amen. amen. I said say amen. amen. Are you blessed to be in the house of the Lord? Yes. Are you excited this beautiful morning? Yes. Praise the Lord. Amen. Are you expecting from the Lord? Yes. I want to tell you, if you are expectant, those expectations of yours shall not be cut off. I want to remind us, we are in the time of revival. Tell your neighbor, we are in the time of revival. Hallelujah. And uh, don't forget the coming of Christ is near. Very near. So don't just undo your salvation casually. Tell your neighbor, don't undo your salvation life casually. Jesus is coming. Hallelujah. Are we together? Are we together? So as I'm bride of Christ, be prepared. Be prepared. Be prepared. Be alert. Amen. And this day God is determined to do you good. Amen. He is determined to meet with the desires of your heart. Amen. He is determined to do something new in your life. Amen. He is determined to give you a testimony. Amen. He is determined to lift you from where you have been drowned in Jesus' name. Amen. Because he is a caring father. And he has good plans for every one of us. Because of our sound, just do something before we bring the man of God in the altar. There is an echo. Can we appreciate her as she do that? Amen. So, because of our time, set yourself ready. From within. From within your heart. Don't allow what you're going through to hinder the move of the word of God. Because the solution is within that word. Amen. And I want to assure you, you not come out of this place carrying your burdens. You not come out of this place having that kind of heaviness because God is here and Jesus is here to do something new. Can you put our hands together and appreciate the Lord? Thank you, this Jesus. We give you praise. Praise. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Just lift up your hands. Father, we are grateful for this honor you have accorded unto us this day to bring us again in this place to worship you giving us another special day to worship you this is a day that you have made and we shall rejoice and we shall be glad in it thank you for your masses for they are new even today thank you for the grace of salvation and the grace of life that you have given unto us. The gift of life that we enjoy comes from you. Today we pray that we shall be able to align ourselves with your will. That our hearts will be tuned to your presence. That we be able to receive what you are preparing for us. Let us be able to please you today to bring honor and to bring glory to your name. Let us, oh God, please you in everything that we are doing today. As your word comes, let your word come in power to transform and change us and do us good. We pray for faith to believe in your words. We pray for the willingness to obey 
and follow the instructions that you have given to us through your word. We pray for knowledge. We pray for understanding. Every force of darkness that brings confusion and he does us from understanding. We bring that force down. We scatter the powers of the rulers in the heavenly places. We bring down witchcraft. We bring down sorcery. We bring down every spirit of poverty, wickedness, every spirit of religion. We bring it down. We refuse to be familiar with your word and your, your house and your presence. Renew us, Lord, through your power and through your ways. Let us come to knowledge of the truth this day. We bless and glorify your beautiful name. Lift up your hands. I say it again. I begin now to speak in tongues. Pray in the spirit for one or so minutes. Each one of us. Pray in the spirit. Pray in the spirit. Allow the Holy Spirit to have his way. Allow the Holy Spirit. I said allow the Holy Spirit. Allow the Holy Spirit. Allow the Holy Spirit. Allow the Holy Spirit. I send allow. I send allow the Holy Spirit to have his space in your life. This morning, Landa Kati, Malazade Kata, Abakatula, Shakanda Rabaka, Ribakata Rabaka. Have your way, Holy Spirit. Carry us through. Carry us through in this service. Take us to the places that you have ordained for us. Let your world come to us in power today. Re-energize us, re-anoint us. Rebecca, release new fresh oil upon us. Let your presence be made manifest. Let your presence be made manifest. Come on, lift your voices. Lift your voices. Lift your voices in worship. Come on, lift your voices. Lift your voices in worship. This is a beautiful morning. We are in before King of Kings. We are before the Lord of Lords. We are before the Most High. Lift your voice in worship. Lift your voice in worship. Lift your voice. Rapakata, Makata, Rakata. Whatever would hinder the flow of the presence of God in your life, let it be eliminated. Let it be eliminated. Makata. Take away resistance. Riba Katika. Makati Sadea. Come on, release yourself. Release yourself. Release yourself. Makatala. In Taralakai. Makantu. Rabakatu. Rakata Sakata. Rabakata. Rabakata. Holy Ghost, we love you. Holy Ghost, we need you. Holy Ghost, we open up ourselves to receive from you. Rapakata, Makanta, Rakata sa, Repeatu Kutu, Rakata sa, Rapakata, Ramashakata, Rakanta. Holy Ghost, have your way. 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 Makan, Rapakan, Rikana, Rakatan, Rapakatan, Rikatasan, Nilkai, Rapikatala. We honor and glorify you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Have your way. Have your way. Have your way. Have your way in this service. Let your name be glorified. And let your name be exalted. We honor and glorify you. In Jesus, a mighty name. Can you put your hands together now and appreciate the Lord God? Hallelujah. Amen. 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 You can turn to your friend and uh, give them a high five, both right and left, and tell them. 
This is the day that the Lord has made for you to rejoice and be glad. It is your day and it is your service in Jesus' name. Say amen. You may have your seat. You may have your seats. Thank you very much. I appreciate Zion Trumpeters. I said I appreciate them. Ah, in the name of Jesus. Oh, thank you very much. I want us to uh, open our Bibles uh, in the book of Isaiah 61. Isaiah 61. Say amen. And I want us to read 1 to 4. This is not a, a new verse. Last Sunday, but one was training on this. And uh, we are in the rebuilding month. Say amen. And we are in a new season as a church and also as a country. From July, we entered into a new season as a church. And from August, we entered into a new uh, season as a nation. We are in revival time. The old times are gone. Some of us are not aware you are behaving the same way, you are doing things the same way, uh, you are praying the same way, you are worshipping the same way, you are acting the same way. Uh, you need to change. I said you need to change. Uh, I want us to read, then I come into explanation of what is expected of us. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to those who are bowed. And number two, or verse two, to, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all who mourn, to console those who mourn in Zion, to give them beautiful ashes, the oil of joy for mourning and the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness that they may be called trees of righteousness planted the, the planting of the Lord that he may be glorified and verse 4 and they shall rebuild the old ruins. They shall raise up the former desolations and they shall repair the ruined cities, the desolation of many generations. Say amen to the reading of the word of the Lord. So, I explained uh, to you earlier in the when I uh, last Sunday one the needs or what is required so that you can come to the place of rebuilding. It starts with you first. Say amen. So if you are not rebuilt yourself or you are not built to this energy, to this level, to this capacity, you will not be able to achieve what God wants you to achieve. This is what Jesus quoted 
in the book of Luke chapter 4, after coming from prayer, returning to uh, the region of Galilee with Holy Ghost and power, and went to a synagogue, and he was given a handed of a scroll to read, and he searched, and he found this in the book of Isaiah, and quoted before the church, or before the people. And this is very key if you are really going to do what the Lord wants you to do in this life. It's very key you understand what is contained here. Number one is this the spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. Hallelujah. The spirit Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because God has anointed me. And he says why he is anointed. Why he is anointed. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because I am now anointed. So he is anointed for something. You are anointed to do a certain assignment. Anointing is not just for the sake of anointing. There is a role to play. So when the anointing comes upon you, it comes upon you for a reason. Now, what is he anointed to do? To deal number one with poverty. So I say it again. You cannot rebuild. A poverty yoke is not broken. The assignment number one is to preach the gospel to the poor. And I say it again. He did not say to make the poor rich. The poor rich. He said to build the broken hearted. To set the captive free. But when it came to the poor. He did not say to enrich the poor. Is to preach the gospel to the poor. So poverty is broken by the power of. Of the gospel. If you ignore gospel. And you are not ready to follow. The principles of the gospel. Though you are born again. Though you are in the church. You remain poor. You will remain poor. Why? Not because he is not able to enrich you. Remember the Bible tells us it is the blessings of the Lord that maketh rich and has no sorrow. So the blessings are able to make you rich. You can be enriched by the blessings of the Lord. So God designed a way of breaking the spirit of poverty through the gospel. So if you cannot obey the gospel, you are entitled to remain broke. <laughs> are you listening to me? So, number one, the gospel always points us to God reveals to us him and what we need to be with him so the gospel will point us to him reveal himself or reveal him to us the gospel is Jesus then and resurrected. 
It is all what he has. Packaged to be brought to us. That's why the Bible says you remember the grace. That was with our Lord Jesus Christ. Though he was rich. He was made poor. For your sakes. So that through his poverty. You will become rich. So the gospel will bring to us. The understanding of who is God. So that as we enter into relationship with him. We understand who he is. Number two. The same gospel will reveal to us. What we need to do. To have a relationship with him. Because if you don't know what to do. And how to treat him. You will not enjoy a relationship with him. Everything given to us. Is given to us through grace. And grace is released to us. When we know him. When we come to believe him. We are positioned. In the place of grace. Am I communicating here? Praise the name of the living God. Now we know what we are supposed to do to keep our relationship with him. How is this made possible? By the gospel. So we are able to know the gospel reveals to us God. The gospel reveals to us what we need to have a relationship with God. Number two, number three, the gospel reveals who we are. In the sight of God. Because we, not, we must come to understanding of ourselves. Who we are. So we are able to know who is God. We are able to know how to enter into relationship with God. And we are able to understand by the gospel. Who, who we are. And number four. By the gospel we are able to understand. What we need to to do all the principles that we need to apply so that we can come to the place of prosperity. Are you getting that? To come to the place of what? Prosperity. So it is not just knowing him. It is not just knowing ourselves. It is not just knowing what we need to do to be in a relationship with him. It is also knowing the principles that we are supposed to apply for prosperity. Because if we cannot apply those principles, we will never come to the place of glorifying him. So the gospel will help us to understand how God operates. How does he work? Most of us are in salvation, but you don't know how God works. So the gospel will reveal to you how does he work so that you can begin to operate in his strength. You begin to operate in his mind. You begin to operate in his knowledge. Because if you cannot operate in his knowledge, then you cannot be where you want to be. So if you don't know how you, he works, you will not ever work with him. So you must understand how does he work. So we are in the church. But most of us do not understand how God works. Let us go to the, to the book of 2 Peter chapter 1 from verse 3. There is something I want us uh, to get into understanding there. Uh, 2 Peter 1 verse 3. And this is a prayer that Apostle is praying. I, I want you to understand something as we move on. Um, uh, let us go to verse 2 before we come to verse 3. I want you to get something here. Uh, he says this quickly. Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of what? Jesus our Lord. What is getting multiplied? Grace and what? Peace. And how is this multiplied? 
is multiplied by what? The knowledge. The knowledge. So, if you cannot know the Lord, you cannot know God, you cannot have the grace multiplied. And you cannot have peace multiplied in your life. Peace. That is shalom. Peace and prosperity. Peace and prosperity multiplied in your life. Multiplied in your life. Because you know through the knowledge of him. Now look at the, 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 this, uh, this thing. Also grace. So what do we need for you to prosper and for you to have whatever you want in this life? You need what? Grace. So he is able to give you all the grace that you need. That having all sufficiency in all things, you will have an abundance for every good work. I commend you to God and the one of his grace that is able to build you and give you an inheritance among the sanctified. So it is the grace that gives us what we want in life. So this grace does not just come. It comes to us because we know him. The more you know God, the more peace you have. But the more you know God, the more grace is multiplied in your life. So the more you don't know him, the more there is no peace in your life. The more you don't know him, the more there is no grace in your life. Now say, grace is multiplied through the knowledge in you. The knowledge of God and the, that of Jesus Christ. Now look at the next line. It says, and his divine power has given unto us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue. Again, look at this. His divine power has given unto us all the things that we need. All what pertains this life. So, if you know him, what you need for this life is released. God is a good God, but he does not bless the strangers. He does not bless what? Strangers. There are things for strangers and the things for the, for the children or the sons. If you are in deep relationship with him, there are things he will do for you. So, the knowledge of God through this knowledge, if this knowledge comes to you, then all what you need in this life and also in godliness, what you need for righteousness and what you need for this life, what you need for righteousness and what you need for this life is given through the knowledge. Through the knowledge. Through the knowledge of him. So if you know him, what you want, the divine power is activated. The divine power is activated by the knowledge that you have about him. If you don't have the divine, you don't have knowledge, you will have capacity, you will have that ability to do things. But they will never uh, be manifested and they will never come into manifestation until you have to come to the place of knowledge. You have the potential within you. You have the power within you. For example, when this light are put off. They are off. It is dark. Being dark does not mean there is no power. Come on, come on, come on. Being dark does not mean there is no what? There is no power. Power is there, but there is something that is needed to manifest that power. We need these bulbs. We need the lighting. So when the power is there and you put on, this is the time now, even the meter will start what? Running. Because it is running because some, something is happening. You have a battery, for example. A battery is there. It has positive and negative. That battery, 
You don't know if it has power or it has no power until you put it into use. And you just need for it to show you it is there and it is working. When you take a simple wire from the negative, you join it to the positive. What will happen? There will be a spark to show you this is not just a battery. It has charge. But before that wire is introduced, nothing is happening. So most of us, you have the potential. You have the, the potential in you. There is what you can do. But that potential does not come to manifestation until you are introduced to the knowledge. So gospel comes to activate us. I say gospel comes to activate us so that the energy we have or the potential you have is manifested because now we are activated it brings information and information brings power unto us so we are blessed but not unless we align ourselves with the gospel we will never see the blessings we have the power to do many things but we, unless we align ourselves with the gospel that power is not going to manifest so we see the manifestation when we align ourselves with the wand of God when we align ourselves with the gospel and when we align ourselves with the truth that is the power of the word of God so the gospel is not just once the Bible says the gospel is the power of salvation so once you get that power of salvation you are able to manifest your potential you are able to manifest your strength that is why he said the gospel must be preached to the poor so what we need more than any other thing in the church we need the gospel i say we need the gospel and we need the word the word that comes from him is what is going to give us the power that we need to become what we should become so we need to value the word of god i say we need to value the word of god I said we need to value the word of God. When God was speaking to Joshua, he told Joshua just this. Uh, be careful to follow what my servant Moses. That is the starting thing. What my, my servant Moses taught you. Take me to Joshua chapter 1 uh, verse 7 first. And you see this. Uh, and God is opening your eyes to come to the place of understanding. Say amen. He said, only be strong and very courageous that you may observe to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. So God is taking Joshua not to his commands. He has taken Joshua to the command the, of a servant Moses. It is like now when you appear before God, you have an assignment before God. And then God tells you, remember the law. Remember the teaching. Remember the word that my servant, Apostle Mwenda, has given unto you. <laughs> Hello? So listen to me and get this clearly. Your life can never show anything different than how you treat the gospel. You will be asked the way you treat the gospel. If you treat gospel with respect, your life will show respect. If you, res you take the gospel lightly, your life will be light. It will be taken lightly. If you esteem the word, your life will be esteemed. It is as you take him. As simple as that. It is as you take the word. If you are taking these instructions with weight, your life will change. If you are not taking them with weight, you will remain the same. Sometimes we give you instructions and we wonder. I am a pastor and we want you to listen to me. We give you instruction and we wonder. We wonder if we really hand or you never hand. Because sometimes we can tell you something 
And the next time we are expecting to see the result or see the action, we see the opposite of what we were saying. And the devil has made it a tradition in the church and has influenced men and women in the church that they take their men of God lightly. I repeat, they take the man of God what? Lightly. And that is where the life falls. Because you will not prosper. Take me back to that scripture. Don't remove it. We will not prosper until we begin to take the instructions given to us by men of God with a lot of weight. When he tells you do this, follow this direction, you follow. But if you are told do this and you don't do it, you will not prosper. So number one, God recommended Joshua for the way of prosperity to the law given to him by Moses, his servant. Do not turn from it to the right and or to the left that you may Prosper. Look at that. You do what? You may what? Prosper wherever you go. You may prosper wherever you go. If you can take, are you listening to me? You can take our instructions with weight. God will make you prosper and this is not something that has started in this generation. It was there even in the time of Jeremiah. It was there even in the time of the old prophets. People used to, to treat prophecy lightly. Lightly. That's why God one time he, sent, he used the message of the Rechabites to challenge the children of Israel. He sent a prophet and told them, go and tell the Rechabites to take wine. Go and tell them to drink wine. But when the prophet came and told them, you are, uh, I have come to instruct you this, take wine. And then they stood and said, we cannot take wine because our father uh, Rechab, hallelujah, gave us, gave us instruction that we are not supposed not only to take wine, we are not supposed to build houses, we are not supposed to plant vineyards, we are not supposed to do. He gave them, he gave, he gave the prophet a list of the things that they are not supposed to do. And they said, we remain true to the ones of our father. We cannot break that instruction. So God was asking them, look at these people. They are given negative instruction from their father. Things are denied them life. It's a curse. But they magnify that 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 which they received from their fathers more than what the Lord has said. And they have kept charge of their father. But we don't keep charge of God. We don't keep charge of what he has instructed us. We look like nothing before people. We look like nothing before the community. We serve the big God, but we don't obey him. We don't follow what he wants. We don't do what he has commanded us to do. We don't do what God wants us to do, and we expect him to bless him. We cannot be blessed until we come to the place of total obedience to the word of God. Even what is disturbing our lives shall not be destroyed until we come to the place of obedience. That is why the Bible says uh, our weapon uh, 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 of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty in God 
and they have the power to demolish the strongholds and also bring down every pretension that exalts its, itself above the knowledge of God and bringing every soul into obedience of Christ and the Bible says being willing to punish all disobedience when our obedience is complete when our obedience is complete I came to tell you this morning you shall change the day you will believe in the gospel I say that I came to tell you this morning your life will change the day you will believe in the gospel there is saying you believe and there is believing when you believe you act in the line with the word of God your life will change when you come to the total obedience what is against you shall be punished by God when your obedience is complete. As long as you are taking the word of God lightly, as long as you are taking the gospel lightly, God will take you lightly. As long as you don't follow instruction, you will not come to your life. I came to tell you this morning, if you cannot obey what I am telling you, you will never prosper. If you cannot follow what I am instructing you, you will never have life. You will cry all the days of your life. You will moan all the days of your life because you have rejected what is supposed to help you. There is no any other thing but the word. I said there is no any other way but the word. He is the way, the truth, and life. There is no any other thing that shall make you great. He shall make you great by the word. He has given us this exceedingly precious promises that we may be partakers of the divine nature, that we may escape the corruption that is in the world, not caused by the lust. We have the word, and the word is the power, and this is what we use to move and change everything we want to change. The Bible says this is God who sustains, who holds the world by the power, by the word of his power by the word of his power i say by the word of his power the power is contained in the word healing is contained in the word blessing is contained in the word everything you need is contained in the word nothing outside the word i say nothing outside the word no prosperity outside the world no healing outside the world no joy outside the world no victory outside the world if you have victory the one shall give you victory if you have healing the one shall give you healing if you have, uh, you have strength the one shall give you strength it is by the power of the world that is why Joshua was told be strong and be very courageous I came to tell you also this morning be strong and be very courageous. I said be strong and be very courageous. Be strong and be very courageous. Why? It will require courage to follow the word. <laughs> it will require strength to do the will of God. Because you are moving against every obstacle of life to do that which you need to do. Now, you need to be strong, you need to be courageous because it is not easy. Hallelujah. You should be happy I'm preaching to you. So you, you should not give me an attitude the, in the morning. You need to enjoy. You need to show me you are enjoying the world. Because there is no way else. I have brought you what can help you. Nothing more. What? Nothing. Hallelujah. That's why Peter would not allow. When people wanted to drag him away from the world. And go and do other business. And this is what the church wants. You want your pastor to be in other businesses. You don't want him to pray. You don't want him to preach the word. You want him to visit you in your house. Hallelujah. And come and eat githeri and cakes with you. 
And this is the time you know this is a man of God. This is a man of God. When you have uh, your, the pre-wedding, you want to meet, to see that, to be even as, um, uh, uh, he's called what? MC. Uh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Leo tunakula, tunafanya. That's what you want your pastor to be. And that, those kind of pastors are loved. That's a man of the people. He has known how to interact with communities. But when you look for him in the place of prayer, you don't see him. When you look for him in the place of the word, you don't see him. And Peter told them, it is not wise for us to ignore <coughs> or forsake the gospel, the, the ministry of the word and prayer. Hallelujah. The ministry of the word and prayer. Anoint appoint some brothers who can distribute the food and let us concentrate with the ministry of the word and prayer. So even, even in this place, if you want some, to be visiting, appoint some brothers and give them ministry of visiting. And they should also be full of all the ghost and knowledge. But us who are come to preach the gospel, uh, let us continue with the ministry of prayer and of the word. That is where the power is contained. Hallelujah. That is where the miracles are. That is where the solution is. The solution is not in the food distribution. The solution is in the gospel and prayer. When you pray and have the word, the poverty is broken and it is destroyed. Am I talking to you? And broken. So we need to come to that place where we allow the men of God to pray and to preach. Am I talking to you? Praying and preaching is our business. We pray, then preach. We pray, then preach. And that is our work. And when we do that, everything will move forward. But when we leave that, it will die. The church will die. We will come for entertainment, more for power. And that's why some of us, when a little challenge happens, you are, you are, you are swept away because you have no strength. You have no power. Why? You have not invested in the gospel and in the prayer. When you invest in the gospel and prayer, nothing moves you. It doesn't matter how strong it comes. You are stronger than it. Because you are established in the rock. We are able to overcome. That's why the word says, let the word of God dwell in you what? Richly. So that whatever you face, you are able to overcome. Am I speaking to you? So look at the next instruction that God gave Joshua. He told him, listen to, the word, to what my servant has taught you. Then you will prosper wherever you go. And then only be strong and very what? Courageous. Now go to the next line. Verse 18, uh, verse 8, sorry. Uh, it says that this book of the law, now, from the instructions of the pastor, you are recommending to the Bible. Are you listening to me? Be a friend of your Bible. Take the words from the Bible. Put it in your heart and then your mouth. Put the words from the Bible into a your heart and then where into your mouth this book of the law shall not depart from where from your mouth why we turn the law or the logos into rama by speaking by speaking so the word is supposed to be in your heart then you speak it it is supposed to be written in the tablet of your heart that's why the bible says i will make a new covenant with you not like that i made with your forefathers and they did not obey i am going to make this new covenant and in this new covenant i will print my laws in your heart and i will implant them in your mind so it is written in our heart the word is supposed to come from the written word into the spoken word and you begin to speak that word 
from your heart. Your heart is supposed to be full of the word of God. And then you start to meditate about the word that you have. You follow instructions of your pastor, whatever he has instructed you. And you build your strength in the Lord by standing the word of God. You take the Bible seriously. You take the Bible with weight. You take all what is written and put it in your heart. And when you put it in your heart, the Bible says meditate about it. Meditation is thinking deeply about the word of God. You meditate, you speak, you think deeply. When you think deeply, even the psalm says you shall prosper in what Whatever you do, you shall prosper in whatever you do. In this instruction, God told Joshua, you shall make your ways prosperous and you shall have a good success. And you have the good success, meditate the word of God day at night. The more you meditate, the more clear it is. And when you meditate it, your visions are informed by the word. Your decisions are informed by the word. Your actions are informed by the word. So your thoughts are informed by the word. You should come to a place where your thoughts, your actions, and your words are the products of the word of God. I am the product of the word of God. And when you come to that level, you make your ways prosperous and you have a good success. If you want to see it happen, begin to speak the word. Begin to declare it over your life. Say, man, how can you declare what you don't have? You will speak what you are, you, the abundance. Huh? There are some people when you knock somewhere, ka, 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 go. when you are about to die or to kick and fall, some will say, Jesus. Others will say, Hallelujah. So they are full of Hallelujah. They are full of Jesus. Others, you say, there, Hey, I am dying. You are full of death. Others will want to abuse, want to talk. Maneno siwe stamuka. Mak mane yodo imekuja. Hallelujah. Yeah, you 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 produce what is abundance. So if you are full of Jesus, even when you are you you feel you see danger is ahead of you, what do you say? Jesus. Others will not even say Jesus. You are shandra bakatola. You are full of tongues. Others will say, hey, I'm finished. I'm dead. Because that is what is in you. Hallelujah. Don't kill me before my time. Hallelujah. I saw one man and I liked him. He made a mistake. When he made a mistake, uh, he was troubled by his wife. Troubled, troubled. So he thought the solution is running to the hands of another woman. And he ran to another woman. And when he ran to another woman, this woman was very humble and was, was like the solution at that moment. Until she got what she wanted. And when she, want, she got what she wanted, she told him, I cannot stay outside anymore. You must bring me home. And because the man valued her and she thought it's the solution, he brought her home. She left, he left the way of God. He could not follow God because now he has become a man married to two what? Wives. And when they came home now, the wives themselves started competition. They started to fight. One of them would bring tea, the other one would bring his tea. Uh, tea. And they would stand to see which one <laughs> he would take. Marrying two wives is, is very, most difficult. I don't think even the devil can enjoy it. <laughs> now, <laughs> the devil is evil, but I don't think he can enjoy that. Now, 
This became a problem. He started separating them. He could not. So I am telling you because of this decision, not because of all other things. That once was by the way. So one day they were fighting. And he ignored. Some things in life you need to ignore them. You concentrate with the most important. <laughs> the one you know. You know they are fighting. They were fighting, demolishing one another. So he did not care. <laughs> they are fighting. He does not care. So one of them turned and asked. You are quiet when all this is happening. Then he looked at them and said, I have looked at myself and I have realized I am too young to die. <laughs> are you, have you heard that? I am too young to die. So I refuse to die. And I refuse to be killed by your stress. Fight when you finish fighting. Then you will come and see me. Because I have decided to make a decision today. Are you listening to me? So, uh, he made a decision. Of course, you know which was the right one. To kick the intruder away. So, he stood and said, I cannot allow myself to die. I am too young. And he decided to ignore. And then decided to tell the young one, I have no interest with you. You are a mistake of my life. Leave. And if you are not ready to leave, if you want to stay in this house, keep on staying. But no, there is nothing between us from today. And he told the other one, if you want to continue with your nonsense, continue. But I took you as my wife and you have a children for me. I will respect you as my wife. But if you want to continue with your nonsense, continue with them. Feed with your nonsense. But for me, I have decided I am too young to die. I have to build life and I have to move on. And remember that statement changed everything. Changed everything in the marriage. From that moment, the intruder went. The right one, because he was disciplined. Alijua alipewa nidhamu. Hizo siku hiyo mwingine aliletwa competition ya chai. Aliona kumbe. And she, she also decided and say, I want to respect you as my husband. So, some things is about how you decide. If you decide to die early, you die early. I'm preaching to you. If you want to die early, die early. But if you want to live long, live long. And how do you live long? Take the word of God. Ignore whatever is around you. Ignore other nonsense. Re believe in the report of God. And walk with the report of God. Ignore whatever what is, is being spoken from other quarters. Concentrate with one whistle. The whistle of the referee. Ignore the fans. They have their own whistles. They will blow to scare you. They will make noise to scare you. But you have to stand and say, I remain focused to my to my course. I must work towards my goal. I must achieve what I was come to achieve and meditate on the report of God. Which report are you going to believe? I say, which report are, is, are you going to believe? That is why Isaiah was wondering who has believed in our report. It is only the one that the arm of God has been revealed to. I pray that the arm of the Lord shall be revealed to you that you will take our report and you begin to take the word of God seriously and with weight and when you take the word seriously with weight you are going to see the result don't come to church and go out to behave like you are never attending the service pastor was full of instruction prayed for all week to come and give you instruction but when he releases the instruction you behave like he has said Said nothing. Are you are you are you with me? You are given instructions, and you walk out and behave like there was nothing.
I tell you, pray. You, you walk like there was what? Nothing. In fact, if I open my mouth now and say, nobody should leave this service and leave the church, the church building until six. And all of us are going to pray to change this. I want to tell you, as soon as I finish that, people will go. So if you cannot obey me, how do you obey God? Na kujia kwa mbe flani. Pala unataka kujenga usijenge kwanza. Anza kuomba. <laughs> Kani pesa ni yako. Alafu unaanza kujenga. Unajenga mala principality na power hiko. Na uja uko na power ya kuibomoa. Unajua sisi unajuanga mambo. Ni kuambia kuna askofu alikuwa anasema. Two sons waki wanataka kuona. <laughs> Moja na kuja na muambia nataka kuona huyu. <laughs> na muambia. <laughs> Apana. Najua umeitwa na fulani umeitwa. Lakini hauna power ya kuvunja ile kitu iko ndani ya huyu mtu ili uweze kupata mtoto na ye. Ni mzuri lakini amekaliwa na powers. Tunahitaji kuvunjwa na mtu wako strong lakini vile nakujua wewe huna hiyo strength. Mia baba nampenda, nampenda moyo wangu na beat. Then he said, go and marry but in mark my ones. She will not be able to give you what? For 28 years. Bando wanangojia nani? Mtoti. Na baba aliwambia. Lekina kesema, amura, can you persevere without a child in that marriage? Now we're comfortable. Sema, yes, my love is strong. Go and marry. Sayi anakujanga akiwa ana mtoto ana ma, ana mwambia daddy we is so ana mwambia your love is strong. <laughs> Sidi ulisema your love is what? Strong for 28. Yes. Mwingine. Akakuja. Akasema nataka kuoa yule. <laughs> Akamwambia huyu Kuna strong old imemkalia. Atakangi wasichana, anataka wa mama. Na lazima uvunje yo roho. Ukikata, hauta kuwa, hata kuwa mume wako peke yake. Sama papa, sindo tuombe. Tuombe na kuambie vile hiko. Jamaa anasema ah nitavunja nita anamwambia mimi nakujua hauna you don't want you don't have what it takes to break anasema ah niko na upendo sawa love conquers yeah, go and conquer hata bila kumaliza miaka jamaa amemu, amemuacha ameona mama amekuja kanisani ako na gari kubwa na pesa anakimbia kwa hiyo mumama hapo sana ni anakuja na mwambia my husband is going out <laughs> nilikwambiaje unajua there are some things we know and we don't even give you details because Mungu anatuleta yanga saa nyingine ka life yako pale huko tunakuona mpaka mwisho. Hawezi kutuletea wewe tukuchunge na tusikujue. Hata ukiomba nisijue kwanza ndio nitajua. Itafunuliwa kwangu unaomba nisijue. Naamuulize anaomba nisijue nini? Usijue e eh? BCD. Sasa ni najua. Na niki kuona na kuchekelea. Because na kuna kitu unaombanga. Nisijue. Kuna mtu tunaileano hapa. Eh, unajua wengine tunaomba. Na tuko strong. Lakini kuna vitu atu kuundua. 
tupitie. Kuna wengine ni wa off road na kuna wengine lazima wakae kwa lami. <laughs> Wakitumwa off road damage ile watapata. Are, are you together? So ukianza kuona mtu kuna wengine ni minus. Eh? They mine. Wanaingia chini mpaka wanalota waleta. Wengine ni wa ni wa kusafisha ile imemainiwa. Hawawezi mine. Uwezi ida deep. Kuna wengine ni caterpillars, wengine ni safari rally. Kutembelea barabara ambayo ilifanya nini? Meundwa. Iko sawa. Tunaeleanwa. So you need to understand. When we speak to you, we know what we are saying. When I was young in the gospel, I was giving people instructions so much because I wouldn't understand them. I remember there is one person now who's been married of me, big, big, close. Close to 17 or 18 years, but now not in marriage with the first wife anymore. The first wife is late. And I saw it. And when I saw it, I called him as a young man. I spoke to him. He had not told me if he has a relationship. But I looked at him and God told me, tell him this and this await him. So I talked to him. I told him, are you in a relationship? He told me, yes. <laughs> I told him, I don't want to know who you are in a relationship with, but listen to me. Quit and pray because you have chosen the wrong line. And I told him, by God's grace, also the lady was brought to me. And I told her in a different Forum. Are you in a relationship? She told me, yes. I told her, this is this and this. So they went and discussed, all of them. They were scared because they didn't, they didn't know how I knew it. So they were scared. For a while, they separated. And they waited. Maybe they found that God is not blessing them. And then uh, they, they receive the spirit of familiarity. When you come to the church first, you obey what pastor is saying. But when you are used to him, you start even disobeying the, uh, the things that you had obeyed earlier. Now this young man went together again and then got married. So when I realized, because now I knew the two of them, I called them and I told them, what I saw is very dangerous. Kindly abandon this way. <laughs> they took me as an enemy. And they treated me with a lot of disrespect. So, that is the time. The news went so far. They, just, they were spreading. That's supposed to mean it's against marriage. He does not allow young men to marry. He prophesies against marriage. And what, what happened? When I met with that bishop, he was not a bishop then. He was disturbed. He was troubled. I told him, listen to me. I am very highly in ministry. Very highly. Listen to me and get this well. We don't have many samples in the ministry that we can sample and use now because we are new. I told him, wait until we are 10. Yes. The samples that we will be having, we shall have testimonies to demonstrate and use. So don't be scared now. I know what I saw. And he relaxed and he said, amen. To make the matters worse, a young man during his wedding, he took, he, 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 he took the best camera people, the video people, and they wanted them to end it when the success of the wedding. He tried to do everything. He had the potential that time. He had money. 
He tried to use what he had to make the occasion as big as possible before the eyes of people. And for sure, he made it big. So he decided, after the videos and need, because they were so they were so glorious, he instructed the editors to write in the videos. And when he is acknowledging and all this, those who were anti my wedding, enemies of my wedding, Mwenda, <laughs> number one, Florida, number two, and all those, they knew they respected us. And they would not obey what they wanted. To their surprise, immediately after they said, Yes, I do. Mama akashikwa na kifafa. Alishikwa na kifafa kwanza. Then from there, akaanguka. Awa kuenda animuni. Ile naitangu animuni. Treatment. From there, akawa asthmatic. Let us come to the video. When they went to look for what they recorded, it was empty. No cameraman, no video person captured anybody or anything in that wedding. So, auntie, my wedding it could not be written alone. They were shocked. They apologized. They were hired. You could not see the hand of God. He continued handing. Sickness started. Problems followed. They got the first bone. They got the second bone. The second bone would not speak. They came to me. They brought now the second bone to me. That's the time they came to apologize. After many years, the man came. What shall I do now? I am ready to do what the Lord wanted me to do. Remember, it is late. You are already married. May the grace of God be what? Sufficient. To, make, to cut the long story short, he moved from worse to worse, even after that. Alikuwa na vitu, skaisha. And at the end of it, few years ago, I think it was 2019 or so. 2019 to 2020, one of them. The wife died. I was told he is married again. And but that time he did not write Aunt Mwenda and Aunt my wedding. But still he is not. So I can see he goes through a lot of pain. Did I see it? Yes, I saw it. I saw what would come to his life. He was telling me I have never enjoyed even a single day of my, my marriage. Even a single day of my marriage. So you knew it. So, I don't want to give many examples, but that is one of the examples that I don't forget. Yeah, there is another one. He's a friend of mine. That one didn't come and he didn't write auntie. Aunt my wedding. I called him. He refused because he knew what I would tell him. He refused. And when he refused to come, I shared with his pastor. His pastor was my friend. When he told me about the wedding. And then I told the pastor. pastor told me, <laughs> I knew it. But I know that man respects you. Kindly share with him. Because I tried and I, I saw he is making it personal. It's like I am against him. I say, when I realized that, Mama kanyambia, muke wa pasta, kanyambia, ata tulipikia kuku. Ata si kwa ofisi, tukamuita nyumbani. 
na hiyo msichana tukamwambia tutembelee tukampikia kuku akakula na chapati na kila kitu wakajienjoy tukawaambia hatuna shida na nyinyi nyinyi ndio mnafanya nini mnaoa so don't take it against us we were just leading it na wakafurahi sasa pastor amewachinjia kuku pastor sasa ame support wedding lakini pastor knew there's no god unajua huyo ako na neema mimi siwezi kukuchinjia kuku nikijua hakuna mungu huyo ako na kuku yake ya kupoteza lakini mimi nitakwambia plain black and white ah huwezi kuwa kuku yangu na ukiwa unaelekea kwa hapa na <laughs> siwezi kubali hasara i will tell you the truth wewe unichukie na uniache nikiwa nimesimama hivi na one day i will be justified So yeye yeah, unajua mapastors wako na hiyo neema. Mimi ni apostle, mimi si pastor. Mbona I don't have that grace. Hata nikupikia kuku kwangu <laughs> ili asi usinione mimi ni mbaya. Mama Karo ni ukweli. If somebody want to hate me for truth, hate me. I have nothing to lose. So nilimwambia pastor na uko na neema. Mimi siwezi fanya hii. Nambia tuliona anachukia anafa mimi si kusiogopangi kuchukiwa by the way because i know that that is one of the process i have to go through say man and i know there are people who cannot hate me no matter what i do even if i love them they will still love me because they are given to me so how yeah kuna watu hata nikitoa kwa wazimu bado wata watanifuata tu bado watakuwa karibu na mimi watakuwa wananiombea hiyo wazimu itoke wako hapo tu awaniachi kunao wewe una unawezekana unanipenda maana niko soba kuna watu <laughs> Ara, hata nikiwa na wazimu bado watafanya nini watanipenda na utaona hapo wako hapo wanalia Mungu 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 rejesha wewe utanitoroka lakini utakuwa nasema rejesha rejesha na wananiletea chakula waone kama nitakula na wananiombea bado Bwana asifiwe and they can't leave me because they were given to me so kuna watu hawawezi kukuacha wala umepewa wala hujapewa wataenda hata ukiwafanyia nini now to cut a long story short nilialikwa kuhubiri huko kwa church yao he used to interpret for me the guy decided not to come ali alikuwa anakuja every time when the minister is ministering na anakaa nyuma nikaona nani avoid na nilikuwa nimemtumania two times na pastor alikuwa ameniambia si do uongee na yeye usitoke hii mkutano bila kuongea na yeye two man another time tunaweza kuwa nafsi yake he refused so nikaona nani avoid nikiona unani avoid hata mimi na ku avoid hello si do nani avoid nikusumbulie nini na unajua the truth you know what i know and you have the kama una information nitatafuta njia ya kufanya nini ya kukujulisha but you know it so you are finding me so i i said i don't want to be embothered to a brother who has decided to avoid me so i stayed he invited people for the wedding he never invited me and i was he was my close friend nirafiki yangu hata sasa He didn't invite me aliogopa hata kwa harusi ananijua so labda aliona ninaweza pewa kana nafasi niongee niseme Mungu ayuko kwa hii harusi so he avoided me so to cut a long story short married one year down on the line the wife died when the wife died akabaki na mtoto hiyo mtoto Uh, she gave birth and died so the boy is my friend even today so what happened the man became so bitter angry angry with god for god punishing him angry with everything and he became wounded and later he came to his senses and came back to god and when he came back to god he was restored The pastor prayed for him. He apologized before the church, say I was who dead. Hey. And what happened? 
uh, he married again after some years. So, there is a conference I used to go annually in their place. Ilikuwa inafanyika kwa shule fulani. So, ilikuwa tunamaliza conference on Friday. On Saturday, those who would like to see me, they would come to see me because I would be free on Saturday and then have a service on Sunday. So I was given a list of the people who wanted to see me. And on the list, he was there. So I gave him time. He came. When he came, it was years down the line. I can remember kuna wakati ulikuwa unanitumania. Sasa nataka uniambie ulikuwa unaniambia nini. Nikamwambia hakuna haja. Ya kaniambia I knew it. Nilijua ulikuwa unataka kuniambia niachane na hiyo relationship. Unaniambia unajua nilijua haja? Because my pastor and want me. Na mimi na wewe na juanga wewe na pastor yangu mko na roho moja. Kile aliona wewe utaona. Mimi nakupima. Maana nimeona mambo mengi yale unakosoa kanisani, yale umeona ndani ya watu hata pastor yetu anafanya nini? Ameona. Sasa nikajua umeniona. That's why I was avoiding you. Nikamwambia yes I knew you were avoiding me. Kaniambia sasa wacha tumaliza hii story sasa. There is the current news. Nikamuliza gani? Kaniambia bila alipitia peni alipitia kanipatia story yote then he decided to remarry. Sasa akasema when I decided to remarry I said I cannot marry in the wedding, big wedding like I did. Nikasema hata nilikuwa nafikiria ni watu walinionea wivu siku hiyo ya harusi. Na nikarogwa, nikamwambia wewe unazama ulirogwa na unajua ni nini ilikuwa imetendeka. Hakuna uchawi. Sema mbeleni nilikuwa nasikia hivyo. Lakini nilikuja ku face the reality nikaona mimi ndio nilizosobey. We are non destiny with that person. <laughs> Akaniambia sasa Neleambiwa na pastor wangu na wale walikuwa wananipatia counseling mimi si kinjana sasa si lazima niweke utakatifu nikamuliza alisoma wapi kasema hata kama pastor wangu aliniambia hivyo roho wa Mungu aliniambia nisifanye jambo kama hilo kabla ya ndoa hiyo ni dhambi inaitwa fornication na nikajua akasema na nikanjiweka kando. Mwana dada na yeye hakuwa amesimama sana. Ukisikia watu wameanguka ujue dada alikuwa wiki. Mwingine anasema pasta unatuonea ni ukweli. Mwenye kupatiana na mwenye kupatiwa nani yako na mamlaka? Rosi ni wacha kucheka. Ninauliza swali. Wewe ndio uko na pesa. Na ni wenu unapatiana. Na mtu mwingine anakuambia nipatie pesa. Nani yako na mamlaka? Mwenye yako na pesa, ndiye yako na nini? Na control na mamlaka. So mwenye 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 mali kama yeye ndio yako wiki hapo kutakuwa na nini? Na shida. Itahitaji discipline kubwa sana. Yoyo mwingine asimame. So, listen to me. The, the lady, yeye alikuwa tayari. Maana hata yeye alimeinfluenziwa na counseling. Na unajua ni substitute. Hallelujah. Unajua substitute wanakuanga wanafanya nini? Wanaoomu. Hata wanashangaa unakatalia kwa uwanja kwa nini? So <laughs> the lady alikuwa na insist kijana naye anafanya nini anakataa mwana roho amemwambia So what happened the last week before the day ile ambayo wamebarikiwa wakai husband and wife kijana can give in Alipo give in Rome takatifu hakuongea na yeye amwambia acha si ni Rome takatifu alimuonya kitambo na akamwambia mambo Roho mtakatifu alingojea akamaliza shughuli zake Alipomaliza sasa naye roho akakuja Akamwambia umekubali ukafanya hivyo na nilikuonya Na wewe ndoa hauta 
waifraia. Kijana akatoka na assurance ya kwamba anajua ni nani ameongea na yeye. Ndio hata waifanya nini? Fraia. So akaniambia tuliona nikakaa vizuri for one year and some months. Haikuisha 2 years. Ya kutoka hapo akaniambia mimi unaniona hapa. Mimi si kama mwanaume. Tunakaa na mke wangu kama sister yake. Nikamwambia rudia tena, akarudia. Akaniambia tukiwa na affairs na yeye kama leo ninaanza anga kunjipanga akili. Ninajipanga na njipanga. Nikijipanga na nijipange vizuri akili na kuomba kwingi. Nitaweza kulala na yeye tena after 4 months. Nikikataa kujipanga kuanzia hiyo siku na maombi itaenda 6, itaenda 7. Na mtu wako hapo anakuhitaji lakini wewe uko hivi akaniambia sasa ndio nimekuja nimeshindwa nitaambia mwingine nani mimi watu wananiona nikiwa mwanaume lakini mimi si I I finished with one simple statement the bible says you shall confess your sins to one another and you shall be healed forgiven and you shall be healed so because you have spoken to me now may you receive your healing to cut a long story, that brother is a pastor now. And before he became a pastor, he became a very big counselor. If the pastor would have given you a prophetic word, he was following you after the prophecy and sit you down. And I can be a, don't take that lightly. Finjana, wakishikana tuwa nataka kuwana, alikuwa counselor wow. Don't try Ali. I tried. This is what happened. Pastor Waka alikuwa ananiambia na enjoy ministry. Alikuwa ananiambia the man has become so effective. Mtu angetenda dhambi, atengwa kwa hiyo kanisa. Alikuwa anamfuata, namwambia, usiongee chochote kwa kuhusu pastor, usikasirike na mshirika yoyote, tubu tu kwa Mungu. Jirekebishe. No yo mtu anaka. Na anamfuata. Hata anamuenda. Kama unafanya kazi, anakukuta kwa kazi. The ministry continued and became so powerful until the man now became a pastor now. He's a pastor. Are you listening to me? So, tulikutana na yeye after one year. Nilienda mkutano tena. Sasa after one year, nakuja kuniona. Haka nambia kutoka ila siku. Sasa nilirundi kuwa mwanaume. Hallelujah. Mambo yote ilitengenezwa tena. Nika muambia amen na usikwasea mungu tena. Sama siwezi, siwezi rudi tena. Now listen to me. Kama likuja ili appointment. Nili muita miaka iyo. Iyo peine angefanya nini? Angebitia. So imagine, God blesses you with the gift of a man of God. A person who can pray and know what your life is all about. Lakini, akikupatia instructions, you fail to follow those instructions. That is dangerous. Yani mbaya. Are you getting that? That's dangerous. Unajua wengine hapa, hoto utaenda mulima, unajita intercessor, prayer warrior. Ukianda kuomba, hata uniambia umenda mulima, mungu hata uniambia hata unaendea nini. Na sa ingine ninaza kuambia hata usiende. Mungu wana kufanya this. Endea kwa hii. Lakini kuna wengine ni wajuaji. Unaenda unaomba, unamaliza maombi. Mungu wana kuambia enda kwa pasta. Ata kuambia vile. Nataka ufanya. Sa mungine sasa. Sa hiyo di mtu wanaambu. Mungine wakuja kwa ofisi na nambia. I was praying. <laughs> Nani kaambiwa ni kupa unipatia. Sayo mbano melipia garama Unayeshimu So instead of suffering Hear instructions 
Are you, are you getting me? You hear what? Instructions. If you follow those instructions, your life will prosper. But if you ignore, you ignore, then you pay a bigger what? Price. You should not pay that price. Because somebody is supposed to pay the price for you. That is why, come away when you talk to Unaishi kwa nyumba ya mama yako na baba yako na ulipi rent. Hata kama mama na mama wala, baba na mama wanalipa nini? Rent. Wewe ufanye nini? Ulipi. Why? Kwa sababu wewe ni mtoto wa ile nyumba. Kuna mtu wakulipa nini? Gharama. Kuna mtu wakulipa gharama. Lakini ukiwa mkubwa, si ndio unaanza kulipa rent. Utanjitoa na uanze kulipa because now you have grown up. You have grown up. So there are some things we need to be instructed. And when we follow the word, we break the yoke of poverty. Say amen. We can never, ever become great minus the word. You must follow the word. You must follow the principles. Biblical principles. You must value your prayer. Hey, you must value what? Your prayer life. Number two, you must value your giving. Now the first giving is yourself. To listen my view on Sunday, dedication. is you, yourself. You give yourself. Yourself. First, where, where? Akili, moyo, mwili, jipiane, kwanza. Are we together? Then give what you have. Kila ambacho uko nacho. Ukipeana roho yako, mawazo yako, mwili wako kwa unduma. Hata vitu zako utafanya nini? Utapeana. You give your, your things. Na uta regret. You invest in the kingdom. You do the work of the kingdom. And then God will bless you for the kingdom. God does not bless you for the personal gain. If he wants to give you personal gain, he will give you bread to eat. Are you, are you together with me? He will give you what? Bread to eat. But because of the future and destiny, he will give you seed to sow. He gives bread to the eater and the seed to the sower. So you sow seeds for your destiny. Am I communicating here? You sow seeds for your what? Destiny. For your life. When you give, you activate receiving. Am I speaking to you? What you cannot give to God, he can never give to you. If there is something in your life you can't give him, there is something you cannot receive from him. So, when you begin to give, you remove limits of receiving. Hello? If you want to change the size of the harvest, you change the size of what? The seed. That's the secret. And finally, for now, you must Treat God with honor. That's what the gospel teaches us. God, who is God? So that we can treat him with what? Honor. You treat him with honor. You honor him with everything that you have. You honor him with your time, with your money, with everything you have. You honor God because he is the one who has given you. And then you honor what he has honored. You honor what he has honored. Honor what God has honored. Am I, am I communicating here? So, if God becomes a person of honor, I want to use the ones of my mom. Never give to God. What you can never give a person you honor. Have you heard what I've said? 
preach it to your neighbor. Preach it to your neighbor. Have you heard that? Never give to God what you can not give to a person. That you honor. Ni wangapi tunaweza kutana na wewe kwa barabara? How many honors me here anyway? Let me see here. How many people honor me here? In one corner of this street, straight. Uh, thank you very much. I pray that it is true. Now, now, how many of you, you can meet me on the way and you want to bless me? Unataka kununulia chai. Unanipatia 50 bob. Unanambia, you can take tea as you go. Guy. Okay, Akuna. How many can meet with me and give me 100 shillings? Sama mtu wa mungu ni nakubariki na hii kunywa chayu kienda huko naenda. Unanipatia mia. Then, akuna? Sasa sitake kuuliza. How many among us gives to God an offering of 50 shillings? How many of us gives to God an offering of 100 shillings? Imagine, unaibika hata kupatia mama yako, hama manjirani, ambao unamueshimu, pesa flani. Hata kama unazingina, you must apologize. If you have that 100 left, or 200 left, na unataka hata kubariki mtu waishima, unamambia hii tupeke yake diyo nikonaye kwa I'm even ashamed to give you. Unanjitetea. But what do we do to God? Let me finish by saying this. God will honor you with wealth and honor the moment you will start honoring him with what you have. Ukianza kufanya hivyo, God will treat you with a lot of honor. Kuna vitu wata malaika watakuwa wanataka kukuletea munga na uliza, iyo ni nini? Wanatema, ah, mfulani, hapana, badilisheni. Peleka. Kuna mahala ni naendanga kwa watu wananijua, ni kikanyanga tu hivi, nifike. Ni nataka kuwe kwa mahala fulani ni keti, host mana ananijua, sema, ah, hapana, ziweke uyo mtu, mahala fulani. Mulete mahala fulani, because ananijua. So there are some things even men cannot give you when God has honored you. They are forced to change it. Who will force them to change? God. That is why unona. Hakuna mtu anaweza nipatia 50, we know mume confirm. Hakuna mtu anaweza patia 100, mume confirm. Hata ningeenda enda juu. Mume confirm you. Why? It is God who has done that. So whenever you honor him, he will command everything around you to honor you. Kuna mshara uta lipua, kuna vitu uta fanyua, because you honor God. Say amen. And that is what the gospel teaches us, to stay right with him. I pray from today we shall value the word of God. There are so much I would have shared, but I don't know why the Holy Ghost has made me stick there. Treat the word of God with weight. When he gives you instruction, follow. Follow the summons. Come to the church to hear instruction and go and do them. Don't behave like you never had anything after the service. Follow the word. Stand in the word. Read the Bible. Make your Bible your friend. Am I communicating here? Make your Bible what? Your friend. And stand in the word. And when you stand the word, automatically, you become a preacher. 
kuna wengine nasema sina neema ya kubiri hebu kula neno kula tu kula tu endelea kukula sasa ile utajenga uta kitambi ya neno utaanza kuongea tu utaanza kusimama unanjikuta una preach atuju wangi toke preach hata mimi siku zaliwa nikiwa mhubiri Nenjikuta mambo imesoma ikaingia nyingi alafu nanjikuta naongea nanjikuta naongea kujua watu wakanambia na unahubiri vizuri na mimi siku anajua kama nahubiri and mushowe i was called in the ministry bwana asifiwe kama unaogopaka kushika mai kuambia watu praise the lord this is what the lord is saying he knows the plan that he has for you is to give you a future that you hope for not for evil you will seek him and you get him when you seek him with your whole heart what are you talking the word what are you doing preaching bwana asifiwe tuko pamoja you will preach that word because it is full in you lakini ukijiona ukisimama unaona unaona tusumuni mbele ya watu hakuna kitu unaweza sema unaona uko blank ni kwa sababu hata hiyo neno uko naye is not even enough for you ikija inaanza kukusumbua unauliza nitahubiri saa ngapi nitasema that's why those who are new convert na wameanza kuja wana neno na wajuku kujicontain anataka kuhubiri in every service hata kikuta na mahala anasikia kuhubiri anasikia kupewa kaibada a preach maana amejawa na lile neno na liko juu yake sema amen so be filled so that you can fill others stand up i want to summarize follow the principles of the gospel and you will prosper that is the message in one word follow what the principles of what the gospel and who prosper nothing more to see complicate work of to see complicate ibanda hata mungu mwenyewe when the world was formless and void what did he do he spoke the word let there be light and there was light by faith we understand the word the world was fashioned by the word of god so that what we see was not created from what is not seen what we see what you see be strong and courageous to do the word you must go out of your way to fulfill the word go out of your way to fulfill god honor god with all what he has given you time everything honor him when you do that you will change your life and finally your situation will change when you believe the gospel tulikuwa tuna share na my wife she was giving me a testimony of somebody alikuwa ananielezea yeye njano na hiyo mtu aligonjeka ugonjwa wa kichwa alimwambia for 18 years endic nonstop then aliambiwa na my father in the lord you will be healed the day you will believe that's the song alikuwa anamwimbia for those years you will be healed the day you believe and one day she decided to believe surrendered to the will of god after three, taking a lot of drugs going to many hospitals one day she 
God help me to believe in your word. And immediately our faith was established. Healing. It's released. And I want to remind you the same. Your situation will change the day you believe. Kuna wengine ukiwa na roho ya undini utatimizo. Kwa nini nafanyanga ni nini? There is believing and believing. Look at your actions. They will show if you believe or not. Look at your ones. Look at your attitude. It shows whether you believe or not. You shall believe. And then things will be established for you. The day you believe that sickness is cured by his stripes, it will go. I know it. Unajua sikia tisija wai kuwa mgonjwa. Ni mwai kuwa nini? Mgonjwa. And you have heard my testimonies. Hapa. When I called my father, my wife called, then we spoke. This is what he just told me. Hold on to the promise. That's the word. Nothing more. Aliniombea a very simple prayer. And I tell a prayer of faith. If you don't have faith, that is upon you. Prayer of faith. And then after saying that prayer, it's a thing he said, oh God, I rebuke everything against your servant and I declare healing over his life. And he said, amen. Then he told me, don't panic. Hold on to their promise. And those are the ones that helped me. Every time they would try to magnify it, then I would hear that word. Don't panic. Hold on to their promise. And then I started confessing the promise. By stripes I'm what? Healed. And I started speaking the word of God. When the doctor would tell me this cannot recover, you don't know who you are talking to. When the fear want to come, I tell you fear, you are in the wrong place. Because when you face with the reality, you can be scared. You need to know how to overcome your fears. And sometimes fears can ground you in the wrong place. So you need to be strong. So anytime the fear would like to knock, I say, wrong number. I hold on to the promise. I recover. I recover. Utangalia mke wako, uangalia watoto, uangalia mazingira, uangalia kanisa, kama weni pasa, uliza sasa baba ni, ni, ni kesi ni kieta binguni. Kutabaki na muna gani. And you have the reason to worry. But when you know God, you become fearless. And you stand with that strength. And I found it like a joke. Yani, ya hundi onikuwa ni naona it is too, too hard for it to be true. So I have found that healing was so true that sickness was something that is not even possible to happen. I said, this is not possible. And when you are not Careful, they will tell you you are living in denial. And that's not, there's a difference between denial and faith. And from there, even small imagination of negative disappears. You become as bold as a lion. For in fact, you forget if there is such an issue. You forget. Sometimes, Fear can come. You can be scared. But you are not supposed to live in, in fear. You need to rise 
and overcome it. Unahitaji tu unasimama na unaishinda. It happens. You can be afraid. But don't live there. Rise above it. Am I talking to you? Rise above it and you will overcome. Lift up your hands and tell God to help you believe in the gospel, follow the gospel, obey the gospel because this is what is needed to turn your life around. That you become a friend of the word. You love the word. You love the word. You love the gospel. You love everything about the gospel. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray that you help us to love the gospel. You help us to love your word. That we shall not treat the word lightly. We shall treat the word with weight. We shall treat the word with heaviness that it deserves. Rabba kanda. Rabba shakata. Rabba kata bakata. Forgive us where we have despised instructions. Where we have despised instructions by your word. Where we have despised instruction by your word. Help us, Lord. Help us to overcome it. Help us to overcome it. In the name of Jesus. Lift up your hands and pray this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, today I repent. Any sin that I have committed against your word, where I have rebelled, where I have taken your one lightly. Where I have not followed instructions. Where I have failed to meditate your word. I pray you forgive me. From today, I promise you, I will take the word with weight. Follow instructions carefully. Live in obedience of the truth. Follow the principles of your word. And from today, every unbelief, die. Every rebellion in me, die. Every spirit of religion in me, die. Whatever despises the word in my systems, die. Whatever dishonors God in my life, die. Die, die. Every fear, die, die, die. In the name of Jesus. And from today, I receive strength. I am strong and courageous. I am strong. I am strong and courageous. I shall do the word of God. I shall talk the word of God. I shall think the word of God from today. Holy Spirit, help me to meditate the word of God day and night. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Every sickness die. Every poverty die. Every spirit of religion die. I am free. I am free from every oppression. I am free from every yoke of the enemy. I am healed. I am blessed. I am rich. I am prosperous. In Jesus' name, I declare, I declare and decree that I am blessed. The work of my hands are blessed. I am blessed in Jesus' name. Can you shout a big shout of amen? Can you celebrate the Lord now with a shout of victory in the name of Jesus the Christ? Amen. You may have your seat. Thank you so much. Our online church, I believe you have been blessed. And the favor of the Lord is upon you. And you have been multiplied and increased in Jesus' name. Can you appreciate our online church? As we leave them from the king's house. Amen and amen.